congratulations. You're now an official member of the DuPont Pioneer Pollinating Team. DuPont Pioneer is the world's largest plant genetics company with operations in over 25 countries and more than 12,000 employees. Our mission at DuPont Pioneer is to use science to feed the world. So as a DuPont Pioneer employee, you'll be helping develop products that feed millions of people. Pollination is a key step in developing hybrid seed corn. Hybrid seed corn is grown by farmers to feed people and livestock and is also used to make a variety of products that touch our lives every day. These products include cosmetics, ethanol, paint, soaps, corn syrup, and glues. As you perform your duties as a pollinator, keep in mind that DuPont Pioneer, thousands of farmers, and many other people are depending on you to do the best job you possibly can. By putting forth your best efforts, you can feel good about the work you do, the money you earn, and take pride in doing something that benefits mankind. The purpose of this video is to show you how to perform the necessary procedures involved with pollination so you can pollinate accurately, correctly, and efficiently. Please note that some procedures may vary by location. To begin learning the pollination process, let's start with an overview of where you'll be working. It's called the breeding nursery. The nursery is divided into different areas. Within each area, there are rows separated by ranges. This separation is called an alley. Each range and row is given a number so the individual rows can be identified and tracked. In order to do your job well, you need to understand some basic biology. So the next two topics we discuss are 1. The features of a corn plant and 2. The pollination process. Here is a close-up of an individual corn plant. At the top of the plant is the tassel, what corn breeders refer to as the male part of the corn plant. If you look closely, you can see the anthers sticking out from the tassel. Anthers shed pollen grains. Also located at the top of the plant is the flag leaf. Moving down, we see the stalk of the plant. If we go down a little farther, you can see what is called an ear shoot. Ear shoots are located between the stalk and the leaf sheath. Plants usually have several ear shoots, but only the top one will eventually turn into an ear of corn. These thin, hair-like strands emerging from the ear shoot are called silks, what corn breeders refer to as the female part of the corn plant. Now, we'll describe what takes place during pollination. Grains of pollen fall from the anthers. When the pollen grains fall, they land on the silks. If we remove the husk from an ear shoot, you can see that each potential kernel has its own silk. When a pollen grain lands on a silk, it goes down a tiny tube through the silk that goes to the potential kernel for fertilization. This kernel will become the seed that will be planted next season. So what does it mean for us to make a pollination? Without our help, pollen from many different plants may pollinate the different silks on the same ear shoot. Our goal, however, is to pollinate all the silks of a given ear shoot with one source of pollen. To begin demonstrating how we pollinate, let's look at another corn plant. As you can see, there's a bag covering the ear shoot. This is called a shoot bag, and it protects the silks from stray pollen in the air. Shoot bags are placed over the ear shoot before any silks have emerged. At the top of the plant, you can see that the tassel is also covered with a bag. This is called the tassel bag, and it's used to collect pollen. To make a pollination, the tassel bag containing pollen is removed from the tassel and then placed over the ear shoot to pollinate the silks. Here, you see a pollination being done. In general, there are two basic types of pollinations. The type of pollination that you're watching now is called selfing. Selfing is done when the pollen from one plant is placed on the silks of the same plant. The second type of pollination is crossing. Crossing is done when the pollen from one plant is placed on the silks of a different plant. Your supervisor will tell you if you'll be doing crossing or selfing. There are also variations of selfing and crossing. Once again, your supervisor will explain which variation applies to what you will be doing. Before we move on to talk about shoot bagging and pollinating in greater detail, this is a good time to discuss pollen contamination. 
Pollen contamination is something we always want to avoid. Contamination of the silks occurs when pollen from a source other than the intended source makes contact with the silks. In other words, if the wrong pollen gets on the silks, they become contaminated. The problem with contamination is it results in outcrosses. Outcrosses are plants that we cannot use in the breeding process. To help reduce outcrosses that result from contamination, let's review what you should not do when pollinating. Do not cover an ear shoot after silks have emerged. Do not use a shoot bag with a hole in it. Do not use a shoot bag that is torn or has come apart. Do not touch the silks. Do not touch the inside of the tassel bag when making a pollination. Do not leave the tassel bag open. Do not expose the silks to open air when making a pollination. Do not use plants if the silks have fallen out or are exposed from under the shoot bag. How can we tell if contamination has occurred? Here is a look at plants resulting from a contaminated pollination. As you'll notice, a number of the plants in the row are irregular and are growing at different heights. These are called outcrosses. By doing your job correctly, you won't have to worry about this problem. The first thing we do every morning is put on shoot bags. The purpose of shoot bagging is to cover the ear shoots before the silks emerge so we can control the pollen source. Remember that shoot bagging is extremely important to the pollinating process, and some would argue that this is the most important step to making a perfect pollination. And if it is not done correctly, pollinations will be lost. Before you can begin shoot bagging, you need to be able to find ear shoots. But this can be tricky until you know exactly what you're looking for. We want to cover only the top shoot, because a corn plant produces only one primary ear of corn. The ear develops from the top shoot, where the plant puts most of its energy. Ear shoots will grow out between the leaf sheath and the stalk. Plants often produce several ear shoots. Some corn plants will start to show shoots at about the same time the tassel appears. But most corn plants produce shoots before the tassel can be seen. As a general rule of thumb, shoots can usually be found between a third and a half the way up the plant. Ear shoots grow in all different shapes and sizes. For example, some look like this, while others look like this. Just remember, when bagging a shoot, it must be large enough to hold the shoot bag in place. This ear shoot is too small to bag, but this shoot is the right size. When placing a shoot bag on the plant, notice how one side of the shoot bag is longer than the other. The longer side is the side that goes between the shoot and the stalk. This little flap helps hold the shoot bag on the plant. Simply slip the shoot bag on and pull it down tight. This will help keep the wind from blowing it off. During shoot bagging, keep in mind that some plants grow faster than others. So when you start looking for shoots, it's very important to not cover a shoot that is silk emerging, like this one for example. If the shoot has silks, it will already be contaminated with stray pollen. That's why we always want to cover shoots before they silk out. Once in a while, you may see something like this, where silks are coming out from under the leaf sheath before an ear shoot is showing. If you find any plant like this, be sure to tell your supervisor. As we continue watching this worker put on shoot bags, remember to only cover shoots that are big enough to hold a bag unless your supervisor tells you otherwise. Do not bag shoots with silks. If you have any questions about a shoot, ask your supervisor for help. Oftentimes, when shoot bagging, we'll double check bags that were put on previously. So even if a plant has a shoot bag on it, check to make sure the bag is secure, especially if the shoot is young. If a bag is loose, re-secure it by pulling the bag down snug on the plant. Whenever you're shoot bagging, it's important to cover new shoots that have emerged overnight and make sure the shoots that were covered previously are the top shoots. As you work your way down a row, look at the shoot bags that are already in place. If there are no other shoots above the one that is covered, then the bag is on the top and correct shoot. To make sure a bag is on the top shoot, always look up one leaf on the plant to find the top shoot. If you find a plant like this one, or there is another shoot above the one that is covered, check to make sure it is not silked out.
If it has not, then cover the top chute with a chute bag and take the chute bag off the lower chute. Okay, now let's quickly review some important points about chute bagging. Only cover chutes that are large enough to hold a chute bag. Chute bags should always be placed on the top chute. To double check a bag, look up one leaf on the plant to see if there is a higher chute. If there is, cover it and then take off the lower bag. Never place a bag on an ear chute that has silk showing. Make sure chute bags are secure by pulling them down snug on the plant. If you have any questions about chutes, ask your supervisor. The next important procedure you'll learn is how to put up a tassel bag to set up a pollination. As you watch this worker demonstrate the process, you can see he makes it look easy. But before you can master this technique, there are several things you'll need to know. First, we always put on tassel bags one day and take them down the next. We do this to ensure that any pollen we collect is pure. To accomplish this, you need to be able to identify tassels that are shedding properly for bagging. Here is a good tassel for bagging. As you can see, the anthers are extruding down the central spike at least 3 to 4 inches. This is the least amount that you want shedding. Your supervisor will inform you about exceptions to this guideline. By looking closely, you'll notice that the tassel starts shedding down the center, then extends out to the branches, then down to the bottom of the tassel. Typically, a properly shedding tassel will last about three days. That can change due to the weather or plant's genetics. When putting up tassel bags, you'll also want to avoid dead tassels. Once a tassel has shed its pollen, it will have few, if any, anthers left on it. And it will usually look pale in the sunlight. Your supervisor will be able to help you identify dead tassels. There will also be some tassels that are infected with insects, like this, or infected with a disease like this tassel. These tassels should be avoided. After determining that a tassel is shedding adequately, you'll need to check for silks under the shoot bag. You can do this by gently rubbing the shoot bag between your thumb and forefinger. Or if possible, let the sunlight shine through the shoot bag to see if it has silks. The chute should have at least one inch of silk emerging for good pollination. Here is a chute we've uncovered to show what a good brush of silk looks like. But remember, you should never expose the silks outside the chute bag. Some plants will have leaves that grow up around the end of the chute and will feel like silks under the bag. Do not be fooled by these. Check the chutes carefully. Once you're sure a plant has a properly shedding tassel and one inch of silk on the chute, you're ready to put up a tassel bag. Start by gently grabbing the tassel at the base and gathering the branches together as you see being done here. Take the pollination bag from your apron and place it over the tassel. If necessary, you can bend the plant over, but do not bend it at the base of the tassel because this may cause it to break. Place the flag leaf on the outside of the bag and fold the bag in half with the leaf in the middle. Make a nice, tight, crisp fold at the base of the tassel and secure the fold with a paper clip to hold the bag in place. The bag will stay on the plant overnight to collect the pollen grains we'll use tomorrow to make a pollination. When your supervisor says you'll be taking bags down, this means you'll be removing the tassel bags that were put on the day before and placing them over the chute to pollinate the silks. This process is what we call a controlled pollination. To start, grab a hold of the plant at the base of the tassel where the bag and tassel meet. Bend the plant over carefully so you don't break the tassel from the plant. Then, give the bag a couple of sharp slaps with your hand. This enables the pollen to fall from the anthers into the bag. Take the paper clip off, open the bag slightly, and while you grip the bag with one hand and the tassel with the other, shake the tassel inside the bag. This helps get all of the available pollen into the top of the bag. As you hold the tassel firmly in one hand and the bag in your other hand, remove the tassel from the bag. Remember, when you take the bag off the tassel, do not open the bag or put your hands inside. Holding the bag close to your body with the seam next to you, fold the bag in half. Then, place the forefingers of your left hand into the front pleat. Then take the forefingers of your right hand into the opposite pleat 
and place your thumbs on the fold you will make like this. Then make a fist with each hand. This opens the bag without putting your hands inside. As you watch this procedure being repeated, remember that this is a very important step. Never put your hands inside the bag because you may have pollen on them from another plant and this will contaminate the pollination. Also, when selfing, you'll need to mark the plant you're working with to ensure that you pollinate the correct plant. You can do this several ways. Stand in the row so the plant is directly in front of you. Place your toe near the base of the plant you're working with. Or break down the leaf that is next to the ear. The next crucial step we'll demonstrate is how to place the tassel bag over the ear chute and remove the chute bag. First, pull the chute bag up to the side, just enough to loosen it from the plant without exposing the silk. Now, with one single motion, pull the chute bag off and put the tassel bag over the chute to keep from exposing the silk. Once in a while, if the silks are too long, you may need to pinch them off when removing the chute bag to leave about one inch of silk. Your supervisor can show you how to do this. Next, use the thumb and index finger of your left hand and grab the left front seam of the tassel bag. Using the thumb and index finger of your right hand, grab the back right seam of the tassel bag. In one motion, straighten the bag up and shake it a bit. By pulling the bag in opposite directions with your hands, you'll spread the pollen over the top of the silks. The last step in making a pollination is to secure the tassel bag around the plant. This helps keep the bag on until we're ready to harvest the seed. Grab the bottom back two folds of the tassel bag and the top of the tassel bag and give it a snap. Also, make sure the seam of the tassel bag is between the chute and the stalk. Then, taking the stapler from your apron, staple the bag around the plant. To complete the process, pull the bag down so it is secure on the plant. Before we conclude, we'll touch on how to prepare, prevent, and perform while pollinating. We want to make sure you're all working safely, so please make note of these very important items. Prepare. Eat a healthy breakfast and bring lunch and snacks. Wear proper clothing, hat, and footwear. Wear a long sleeve shirt and long pants to cover your skin. A hat to protect yourself from the sun. Wear high-top sneakers or boots. Always wear eye protection and plenty of sunscreen. And drink lots of water. Avoid carbonated drinks. Prevent. Scan the area where you're walking on uneven or slippery surfaces. And be aware of hazards. Keep eye protection on at all times. Watch for sharp leaves. Avoid touching or rubbing your eyes before you've washed your hands. Stay hydrated. Drink lots of water before, during, and after work. Know the signs of heat stress, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Tell your supervisor immediately if you feel faint or dizzy. Take immediate action if you or someone else shows signs of heat-related stress. Stay hydrated and take breaks out of the sun. Perform. Follow the directions of your team leader. No horseplay. Keep safety in mind while you work and go home healthy at the end of the day. This concludes our presentation on how to pollinate and the safety precautions to take while pollinating. We realize we've covered a lot of material in this video, but with the help of your supervisor and a little bit of practice, you'll be on your way to becoming an expert DuPont Pioneer Pollinator. <music>